guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do this really cool thumbnail design. And yeah, it doesn't take too long, it's pretty easy, it's quick, um, it's nice, quick and simple. And uh, yeah, so it should be pretty easy to follow along. And uh, if you do have any questions, don't forget to leave it in the comments and I'll be happy to help you out. But uh, if you do have any problems, just please leave screenshots, it just makes things a whole lot easier. Okay, so let's get into it. So for our project, the what we're going to be doing is we're going to go to File, New, and the dimensions are 1280 by 720 you could do 19 19 20 by 1080 uh, which just means it's high quality but it's really unnecessary just because whenever wherever the thumbnail is going to be seen is going to be really really small so it's really unnecessary to do dimensions that big and uh, yeah this should be a suitable size it's really easy size to work with just it just just so like all your stocks work with it and all that it looks really cool and okay so so we've got this blank white canvas here and we're just going to unlock the background layer just by double clicking on it and now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our foreground color and this is where we pick the background it has to be really dark it can be a really dark red it could be a really dark blue but for the example i did a really dark blue so i think i'm just going to pick another really dark blue um it probably will look pretty much black in the preview but just know that when you do actually fill it come to fill it like this you can actually see it's like really dark uh, but there is still a bit of blue there so um, you can just press Alt Backspace to um, to fill, uh, yeah, to just to fill the layer with the foreground color, or you could literally just go to your paint bucket tool, which is right here behind your gradient tool. Just click on your paint bucket tool, just click, and it'll fill. And uh, now we can see it's a bit too blue for what we want, so I might want it a bit darker. So what I can do is I can press Command U or or um, Control U on a Windows computer, and just use this lightness tab, and that can control on how dark we want it in the whole. Um, and how we want it to look. Okay, so now we've got this really dark uh, blue background, and it's how we and it's looking how we want it. And now we're going to add a light to kind of shine on it, just to I don't know why it just looks good <laughs> to be honest. And okay, so to do that, we're just going to go to our foreground color, just make it a white. And now we're using our brush. So our brush tool's over here, or you could use B in your keyboard. You want to right click, and then the size doesn't really matter. Uh, just make sure it covers but it's probably a good idea to make it so the edges meet or just go over uh, the sides of the canvas you just want to make sure that your um, your softness is also on 0% and okay we should be good so now what we want to do is we just want to click uh, you don't want it to cover too much so just try and make it you can find the right balance for yourself okay yeah that looks good and then we can just lower the opacity and okay so now you can see we've got a light and you can see there's quite a lot of this gradient banding. This is what this banding is called. And uh, to fix that, we can just go to filter and the noise and then add noise. This is one of the ways you can fix it. There are other ways as well, just by going to your filter gallery and stuff like that. But um, okay, so I think, do you just want to mess around with the amount just so you don't want it to be like too, you don't want to add too much noise because then you can see all these little dots and you don't really want that. So you just want to, Make sure, just maybe use your arrow keys and then you can find the right balance for what you want. Um, obviously again, you don't want it to be too grainy. So, And again, like I said earlier, this is going to be viewed really, really small. So it really does make too much of a difference. Um, so yeah, okay, I think that's going to be good enough. And now what we're going to do is you can see that we got a image in the background and it's of Photoshop. And we got that image just because it's a Photoshop tutorial. So you, for this might be for a Call of Duty video or anything like that. So you might want to use a Call of Duty image. But for this tutorial, again, I'm going to be using this Photoshop um, image. It is of the speed art I did for Robert Lewandowski. And uh, then you're going to drag it lower than your light. Just so you can see the light on top of the image that you just placed. And now we can send the blending option, which is right here, to luminosity. There we go. It, what that does is it makes the it adds a tint to the photo that is the same as the as what's behind it, pretty much. So we added a blue tint, and uh, then we can just lower the opacity right down, and there we go. That looks really cool, and uh, it's how we want it at the moment. Okay, and now we can. This is where we can include stocks. If you don't know what a stock is, it's basically this is a dust particle stock, for example. Uh, you can get these in graphics packs, but I don't really tend to use graphic packs a lot. So I, I just Google is just fine for me. <laughs> so yeah, um, you got all of these to choose from. You can mess around. You, if you don't want to use dust particles, you can literally just type in um, smoke 
and then uh, you could use some of these as well and they, they work pretty well but um, again I think we're just going to use the dust particles so um, yeah make sure that there are decent dimensions as well they have to be uh, at least 1280 by 720 like I said earlier um, by using such small dimensions uh, like these it allows you to, you to use a um, a lot more stocks so yeah so small dimensions means you can use more stocks as you might not have a big enough stock uh, a big enough stock as if it was like 1920 by 1080 so you can see this is a big enough one so we just go to view, view image then just find a download somewhere <laughs> there's probably um, there's always one somewhere so just click download right there and uh, okay so now we've got it in our downloads so you just want to drag it in just like that and then you want to make it bigger by holding shift just to make it fill the whole canvas and there we go and now we can just drag it below our light because we always want our light to be the top uh, layer because we want it to reflect on everything else okay so now we've got our dust particle selected we can go to our blending options right here then change it to screen and then I'm just going to lower the opacity and there we go we have this really cool um, uh, dust effect going on and we can change the color so it matches the rest of it by pressing command U again and then uh, just, uh, yeah, just press command U and then just change the hue until you find a nice blue that you're after uh, that's pretty cool um, yeah okay I think we'll go for this and now what we can do is we want to right click on our layer and then go rasterize layer and now once we've done that we're going to right click again and go to convert to smart object and now but the reason why we did that is because now we're going to add a gaussian blur to these effects and then we can erase some of the blur from the layer so let me just show you what i mean so once we've changed our object to a smart object we can go to filter blur and then gaussian blur and there we go you can see it's all blurred and you don't want to blur it too much so you can't actually see the particles anymore so like that we don't want it to be that too much so maybe um uh, I think 1.6 or somewhere around that is good. Yeah, okay, okay. We'll go for 1.9. And now you can see the smart filter or little thing pop up below your layer. So then click on the, the white box, then go to your eraser tool, and then you can just click. And as you can see, it erases the blur from the um, from the from the um, from the layer that we just added. So you just want to erase some of the blurs and then it kind of gives the effect as if it, like some of the, the particles are further away than the ones that are not blurred and they are closer. And yeah, it looks really cool. And then we can just lower the opacity of the particles even more. And there we go. Looks really cool. And uh, yeah, I think our thumbnail is looking pretty good so far. Also, no another thing I should have added that we can kind of blur this background image a little bit. So we can just click on our background image, go to blur, Gaussian blur. And uh, yeah, we can do the same there. It doesn't really look good all the time because sometimes it can be a bit hard to work out what it is. Like I said before, you're going to be seeing it really small and you don't want it to be too hard to see. So um, maybe only adding a small blur will be good. Okay, so now we've done that and now we're going to add some light strokes and then we'll move on to our color correction and then we're going to add the text into the middle. So uh, yeah, we add our text and that kind of stuff as well. So to do to add our light strokes, we are going to make a new layer just like by clicking this icon in the bottom right. Then we're going to go to our pen tool. You can press P on your keyboard, or you can press the pen tool icon right there, and make sure that your foreground color is white. And then you just literally just want to make random shapes in the corners of your um, of your design. Well, not really in the corners, but you, you can see uh, what I mean. So we're just going to do a simple line just like this going across, and then you just want to right click and go to fill path. And there you go, we have this line right there. Then we're going to make an, another one. So just make a new layer and then just, just go, just do the same thing really. Just make some cool shapes. And then, okay, just match that up. Right click, fill path. Just like that. You can see that we've got these two lines right here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. And we're literally just going to blur that shape. Uh, okay. You don't want it too much because then you can see it start to go a bit grey and we don't want it to go grey, we still want it to be light. And uh, okay, I think that's good. And then we can just do the same blur on the other layer, on, on this shape right here, just by pressing Command F. And now we can just lower the opacity of those. And there we go. You can see we've got these two light effects and they look pretty cool. Instead of uh, lowering the opacity, you could just set it to overlay as well. 
and that probably looks better actually so yeah we'll probably do that and now we're going to add some color correction and then we'll move on to the text so the first bit of color correction we're going to add is this brightness and contrast if you don't have this adjustments tab open which has all our color corrections you just want to go to window and adjustments which is right there so now you just want to click on brightness and contrast which is like the half sun icon little thing then you just want to increase the brightness a bit not too much and then we can increase the contrast and now what we basically did is we kind of made the darks darker and then the bright and then the bright parts a bit brighter and it looks really cool and it works well and now we're just going to kind of make an s shaped curve with our with our um our, our curves our color curves okay it's looking good and okay and you can see our light strokes are really standing out so if you don't want them to stand out too much uh, you can just lower the opacity of those okay that is really cool and um, now we can increase the exposure a bit just by clicking on this icon increase the exposure and then the gamma correction just kind of does the same effect as the brightness and contrast really and you can see it's like really really blue and you might not want that so if you just want to go to hue and saturation just lower the saturation a bit and it won't be too blue obviously uh, too blue can look kind of nice on some banners and then sometimes you just want to change it and uh, you can also change the color of the whole thumbnail just by changing this hue as well just thought I'd point that out uh, so yeah uh, if you if you're doing like a series and you want like each thumbnail of the series to be a different color this would be a really good option for you just by changing the hue just like that but uh, I think we're just gonna keep it blue so just gonna change it to zero okay so now we have that we can also add another cool effect just by clicking on curves just doing a regular s shaped curve just like that and then we're going to change the blending option to luminosity and then we just lower the opacity and yeah that looks really cool like that as well adds a nice little effect it's really subtle but it is really nice as well the last color correction that we're going to add is this gradient map so it's this icon in the bottom right corner so we're going to click that and then change the, the blending option to overlay and then yeah we can just mess around with these if you have some preset ones uh, added you can just mess around with those oh i've got to change the opacity down uh, so yeah, I probably changed the opacity between 10 and 20%. So I'm probably gonna go for about 15. And then you just want to mess around with these, see what looks best. Uh, if you have some preset ones, just use those. But the the default ones do work pretty well as well. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna go for this one. And then if we want, we can just add another curve and just make it a bit brighter. And there we go. And now we've got our color correction sorted. We've got our background sorted. And now we're gonna add the text. So, like I said earlier, we want to make sure that our light is always going to be the top layer. So you just want to click on the layer below the light, and then we can just use our text tool just by pressing T on your keyboard, or pressing this icon on the bottom, well, on the left. And you just want to click, and then for this for this thumbnail, we can just do how to create a thumbnail. Okay, so yeah, this is, I'm making the thumbnail for this tutorial in the tutorial and it's kind of trippy okay um see so yeah, you just want to make it all on different lines well not all of it obviously um so yeah if we can see that we want to make our text nice and big because like i said probably like five times already we're going to be seeing the thumbnail really small so you want it to be eye-catching and it's because the whole object of a thumbnail is to get people to click on your video and um so yeah we've got some really nice big and bold text here and we want the like the whole focus of the video to be bigger so we can see it's how to create a thumbnail so we might make this how to text a bit smaller just like this but again you want to be able to read it and then you'll make this a bit smaller as well just like that and there we go you can see that this thumbnail really really stands out but you might actually notice oh it did not mean to make it red you might you might notice that um, there's a bigger gap between how to and create a then create a and thumbnail. So to change the spacing between uh, the, between the lines, you just now highlight the two lines, press Command T, and then you'll see this box little uh, this little box pop up, and then you can actually just click and drag on this icon to the left or right, and then uh, you can change how how spaced you want it to be. And there we go. You can see that this uh this thumbnail is really taking shape. It looks really nice, and it's really big and eye catching as well. Um, the cool effect that you can do uh, to the text is by just setting the blending option to overlay and that adds a quite nice effect but if you're going to do that you need to add a drop shadow and then perhaps blur, uh, blur the background a bit more but you can see that the drop shadow works really well 
And yeah, that's one way you can do it. That works really well. And uh, let's actually clear that because I don't want to. That was just an idea. I'm not actually going to use that though. So we're just going to clear the last hole. So we're back to what we were. And I'm going to show you how to do this kind of uh, indent into this rectangle effect. So to do that, uh, you just want to get your rectangle tool, which is right there. Then you just want to uh, draw, click and hold over the word that you want to be indented. And there we go. And then you'd have this live shape property box pop up. And my, for some reason, my default is a stroke, a white stroke, and then no fill. I have no idea why yours probably won't be like that. But um, if you if you do have this, then you'd want to make your fill a white, just like that. And then you want you don't want a stroke, so you want to click on your stroke icon and then click on this rectangle with the red line. And there we go. We've removed our stroke and we've added a white fill. And now what we want to do is we want to press Command or Control and then click on the T of your text. And then you can see it selects all your text. And um, now while we've got a rectangle selected, you just want to click on this mask icon down in the corner. And um, and that what, what that basically did is we created a mask on the rectangle. So the rectangle is only showing in the text, but we don't want that. We want it to only be showing where the text isn't there. So while we got our mask selected, we're going to press uh, Command I. And then you can see on our little thumbnail, it might be a bit hard to see in the video, but you can see our thumbnail that we have inverted the selection. And now what we can do is we can use the text tool right here, click on the how to, and then just highlight the thumbnail and then just press delete. And there you go. You've made a, a really cool thumbnail. And I, in my opinion, it works really well and um, it's really eye catching and it's it works really well, like I just said. Uh, you can select the rectangle and then the how to create a text and then press Command T. You can make it bigger and then you can rotate it a bit if you want. And yeah, it look, all looks really, really well. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys can improve the, the quality of your thumbnails now. And hopefully this helps you to get more views on your videos. So yeah, um, thank you guys for watching the tutorial. I appreciate, get, appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video.